How's it going, guys? It is 2.50 a.m. Friday, August 5th here in Japan. And we have a past little question for gastro step one, internal medicine 2CK. Uh, very high yield stuff here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-I-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 24-year-old man, five-month history of diarrhea and 10-pound weight loss during this time. Physical exam shows pallor and mild pitting edema of the lower extremities. Sudan black B and oil red O stains of the stool are positive. Patient has patient's brother has type 1 diabetes mellitus. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So let's just whip the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, subacute combined degeneration, wrong fucking answer. The fancy sounding condition that refers to the neurologic dysfunction that we see in B12 deficiency. So some resources can obsess over the three tracks that are affected. The starting point is just saying spinal thalamic tract. That one's not involved. And then you can say, okay, if I know the spinal thalamic tract's not involved, then what are what are other tracks that I know of? Okay, I know of the dorsal columns. I know of the corticospinal tracts. I know of the well, spinal cerebellar tract. That's the more challenging one, but those three are affected, okay? The relevance to this question is that B12 is absorbed through the terminal ileum with intrinsic factor, which the terminal ileum is not classically involved in this patient's condition. Subacute combined degeneration, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, PS positive macrophages in the lamen appropriate, wrong answer. This refers to Whipple disease, okay? It's a very buzzy uh, description, histo histologic description here. Uh, caused by Whipple disease, caused by bacterium, Trophorima whiple, if I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, and uh, miscellaneous findings, arthritis, you know, cardiac dysfunction, but they will always mention PAS positive macrophages and lamin appropria. Okay, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, normal D xylose test, wrong answer. So D xylose test will, will pop up on internal medicine and surgery questions sometimes. This is a monosaccharide that does not require any type of uh, digestion to be absorbed, okay? So if a patient has an intact intestinal lining, this should be absorbed without an issue. So for example, if you have lactose intolerance, lactase deficiency, although you lack disaccharides to the brush border, your intestinal villi are normal. There's no problem with actual physical absorption. So if you give desiolose orally, this is absorbed into the bloodstream without a problem. We have an intact intestinal lining. But let's say for, as well as if we have pancreatic insufficiency, okay, chronic uh, pancreatitis such as with alcoholism, cystic fibrosis, exocrine pancreas insufficiency, uh, you'll absorb desiolose without a problem, okay? But let's say you've got uh, Crohn disease, okay, or celiac disease, where you have actual physical disruption of the intestinal lining, d xylose test will be abnormal, okay? In this case, wrong fucking answer. We will have an abnormal d xylose test in this condition because this is celiac disease, okay? So you need to know, the, I'll tell you the giveaway for this condition. You say, well, how are we supposed to know that this is celiac? Okay, I'll tell you. It's the pallor here. Now, I said this is an easy question. This it's easy in the sense that you need to know iron deficiency anemia is exceedingly high yield for celiac disease. Holy shit. Okay, iron's absorbed in the duodenum. And you will see this, especially on 2CK questions. You'll get a big vignette and you're not sure. You're like, is this lactose intolerance? Is this celiac? I'm not sure, right? And, and I'm just like, where is it? I'm looking for it. And you see hemoglobin's low. You see MCV's low. You see that they say pallor in there and you're like, boom, it's iron deficiency anemia. Answer celiac, okay? Exceedingly fucking high yield that you know iron deficiency anemia and celiac, which leads to increased red cell distribution with as our correct answer here. So increased RDW is seen in iron deficiency. I've made plenty of heme clips here on the audio cube bank here on my YouTube where I've, t I've harped on this, okay? So some questions will throw this into a stem. If you get one of the, if you get a long heme question and they say RDW is not increased instantaneously, iron deficiency anemia is the wrong fucking answer. Okay, it's it'll be normal or decreasing conditions such as thalassemia or hereditary serocytosis, but you need to know that in celiac, iron deficiency anemia, and you have an increased RDW. Okay, microcytic anemia, exceedingly high yield. So granulomata, wrong answer. This refers to Crohn disease. Okay, so you have non-caseating granulomas. That's, that's also exceedingly high yield, okay? So the relevance of the type 1 diabetes mellitus in the brother is that autoimmune conditions go together, okay? So the patient could have psoriasis. The patient could have 
pernicious anemia or SLE. Okay, the, the, the mom could have rheumatoid arthritis. Don't worry about strict HLA associations, but that's USMLE will do this oftentimes when they want to push you toward an autoimmune disease. Uh, you can also know that uh, anti-tissue transglutaminase IgA antibodies are positive, anti-endomycel, okay, anti, which are the same thing as anti-glidin and celiac disease. These And these stains here are just for fat, which if you have uh, mal intestinal malabsorption, you can get steatorrhea. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.